So if you've ever had this issue when using iNav and capturing some black box and checking it out in Black Box Explorer where the traces are pretty much unusable and then if you go into the header file, you see this where it's all blanked out. In today's video, we're gonna show you what causes that and how to fix it. So before we jump in, just a little bit more on the symptoms. As you can see here, if you have a log and you go into the header, it's all blanked out and you'll see that even before you get to the log file. If I go into here and just look at my traces, the you can see it's kind of at its maximum extent here. So it's not scaling these appropriately. And that is because, and I zoomed out here, and that is because of that header data being missing here. So it's not capturing all the log file information in black, you know, when it's starting the log file in iNav. And then as a result, the, the trace header here is, is all messed up. So knowing that, let's go in and figure out how to fix that in iNav. So popping into iNav configurator, it's pretty straightforward. It is the loop time that's the issue. So it really has nothing to do down here with any of the settings in the black box tab. It's actually the loop rate that's your issue. And you can kind of check that out down here at this uh, loop load uh, 7%. I don't know what the optimal or magical number is there, but I can show you how to edit your loop time. Now, unlike in Betaflight where that's under the configuration tab, the loop time or loop rate, the PID loop rate, how many kilohertz it's running at is not in here, is not in the GUI. You actually have to go down to the CLI and type in get loop time or get loop would give it to you as well. Now, the other thing that can catch you off here is this loop time. This is not Hertz. So when you see this thousand, don't think, oh, it's a thousand Hertz. No, that's a thousand microseconds. So it's not milliseconds. It's one millisecond or a thousand microseconds. So it's, it, you know, it's very easy to go and think of this like with a thousand microseconds or a one kilohertz uh, loop rate, PID loop frequency, because it's the same, you know, it's 1000, 1000, it's the same thing. However, it's inverse when you're going to any number different. So for example, if I just copy this and I go and do a copy and then type in set and then put this in, if I want to go down and make my clock work slower. I have to put in 2000 up here and that would use a 500 Hertz uh, sample loop frequency. So that's, that's pretty low, but 500 Hertz would be it. Your default here is not a uh, thousand. I, you can see I have it set at a thousand for my PID loop frequency. So one kilohertz sampling rate. If I go to put this at 2000, that's going to be a 500 Hertz sampling rate. Conversely, if I set this to set loop rate and set this to 500, not 400, 500, and I won't hit under here because you can see that. But if I put that to 500, that's going to be a two kilohertz PID loop frequency. If I set it to 250, that's going to be a four kilohoop, kil nah, a four kilohertz PID loop frequency. So you can see how that works. So the bottom line is whatever the PID loop rate that you have it at, you probably want to reduce that. So it's actually moving that number up reduces the PID loop rate. You're going to most likely want to keep that in multiples and even integers so like 1,000, 2,000, 4,000, 500, things of that nature, something that's divisible by, uh, well, it's divisible by, uh, I guess, two, it's every two, because your uh, standard gyro loop rate is uh, eight kilohertz. Now, that's not always the same. So if you have a gyro that is a BMI gyro from Bosch, those are on the 3,200 uh, PID loop frequency. Then you'd want to stay in the, in the divisible of 32. So it'd be 32, 16, uh, 800 uh, hertz, things of that nature. So you can kind of use that inverse uh, relationship that we talked about there as well. The other point with this is I wouldn't worry about going uh, too low. 500 hertz that's a little low, but a thousand, that's not problematic. In fact, I'm gonna put a card to a video on the upper left here. This is me putting iNav up against Betaflight in a head-to-head -head flight comparison. And uh, it did really well. To some extent, I feel like iNav in that specific tune in Flatbosch was a little bit better, maybe a little. Just, it could have been, I just, it could have been other influences, but it was on par. And that was at a thousand hertz sampling rate. So this thing where we have to use these ultra high sampling rates to get the best flight performance, that's 
not really true. So nevertheless, check out that video if you don't believe me and, and see for yourself. But I usually run iNav at one kilohertz uh, PID loop rate. It works fine. Logging works fine every time. And yeah, it's all good. Now do keep in mind when you're lowering your PID loop rate that running such a high D-shot value like D-shot 600 or maybe even 300 might not make sense. D-shot 300 is equivalent with a four kilohertz PID loop rate. D-shot 600 and eight kilohertz PID loop rate. So we're not anywhere close with that. Uh, 150 would be a two kilohertz PID loop rate. So 150 might be your jam. And the lower your D, the slower you transmit any signal, the less your noise, uh, uh, how do I explain this? Your noise to ceiling or your noise to signal ratio is actually better. So your noise floor goes down when the signal's lower. So especially if you have a bigger quad in iNav with long cables to get out from the motors to the ESCs or vice versa, you'd want that lower kilohertz rate. And if you're running a slower PID loop, like a thousand hertz, you know, then, you know, transmitting eight times faster uh, when the sample's just the same data over and over and over again, eight times before it gets to the next updated calc may not make sense. And especially if you're having any kind of issues uh, with D shot and uh, the signal's not getting through correctly because of that uh, noise floor is a little higher because you're running this higher D shot loop rate. So do keep that in mind that you may want to reduce this down. Uh, if you don't have any issues, you don't need to. It doesn't necessarily hurt anything, but um, it does open that door up a little bit and it makes a little bit more sense that uh, you don't need to do that. So with all that, hopefully that helps. Uh, again, running at a thousand hertz uh, PID loop rate, I don't have any issues with black box logging ever. Running at a two kilohertz PID loop rate, so that's setting the loop time at 500. Uh, sometimes my header log data or the header data in the logs would be missing. Sometimes it'd be there, sometimes it'd be missing. And that inconsistent we see is a real pain because sometimes your logs are fine and sometimes they're kind of not useful. And you know, you, you never really know what you're gonna get. It has to deal with arming and if it has enough time to actually write the data to the chip, so on and so forth. So nevertheless, this is what you should be looking for when you see, you know, running a, a normal black box log where all the header data uh, you can see here, if I get out of the way, is filled out, all the check boxes are checked, everything's in good order. That's what should be getting normally. And then here you can see what you should be seeing for the traces. You can see here they're not topping out. Um, you know, they're, they're at their right, you know, when I'm doing a full roll, I'm seeing a thousand Hertz over here, all the stuff's lining up, like everything's in, in good order and how it should be. That's what you should be used to uh, or experiencing and expecting. And again, if you run that thousand Hertz PID loop rate, you'll be good to go. Thanks everybody. Hope this helps. See you on the next one.